Yes, we are back at it at the Real Life in this week's guest. Yes, I've got him. It's the pretty boy. It's Robert McNulty. Robert, how you doing, mate? I'm not too bad. Who's yourself? I'm very well, mate. Very well indeed. Well, first first question, mate. Where's the pretty boy come from? I don't know. I think it's just uh, the gym call, mate. I don't know. Can I tell you? I was just thinking, mate, it's obviously your tap shag in the shire, innit? So, <laughs> there you That's go. It. That's the answer, innit? <laughs> it's... <laughs> So uh, recently we bumped into each other at the Scottish Boxing Awards. You picked up the two awards it was, one for the fight of the year in the male elite category. Obviously I won your, your cracking showdown, your domestic class with Alec Arthur Jr., which I may add was a sensational class. Um, you've done the country proud. But let's just go first with fight of the year. How proud of you to achieve that award? Oh, I'm proud, obviously. Grateful for everyone uh, supporting me through this year. Obviously with my fights and stuff, but... Uh, also grateful having a good coach like Craig training me as well now. So I Do you feel that the hard work's paying off for you? Every you're coming to gym, you learn new things every day and the hard work is paying off in the long run as well. I it is paying off because uh, obviously I fought in the Scottish there and uh, I got a, a letter saying obviously I'm uh, invited to come up and train with Box in Scotland so that was a big achievement for myself. Obviously I've been wanting to do that for years. So I do you feel you're maturing as a fighter, but also as a person? Um, I, I think uh, the older I get, I'm getting more mature, so... Do you feel that the bigger the bigger the challenge, the better Rob not we will see? As you go through the gears, you go up the levels, you come through amateur experience and you move on to the pros eventually? Aye, definitely. Aye, I've still got a good couple of years before I look at going pro, because uh, I watch I get that uh, experience, going away with boxing Scotland, going to international trips and stuff. You need that sort of experience, obviously, can of just keep fighting down here. You want to get away to different countries and that, and get better experience. Scott Harrison always says, to be a champion, you must train every day and master the basic. Is that a kind of method you live by as a fighter? Uh, aye. Aye, I'd agree with him, aye. Definitely. Life's all about sacrifice if you want to get to the top. How badly do you want to get to the top, Robert? I want to get, back. I want to, get to the top 100%. Uh, Obviously, I need to stop the party life sometimes. You <laughs> know what I mean? Uh, gone out shagging. You know what I mean? <laughs> I need to stop all that. Uh, I do. Because when you obviously hear about Craig speaking about cash, how dedicated he is. And he was coming in early in the mornings and head movement and all that kind of stuff, looking in the mirror. I want to do that stuff. But obviously, I need to dedicate myself. Are you making a lot of sacrifices now to get to the top and get to the... Mo the the, the level you want to be at this stage in your career? I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm still young obviously, I've, I've got a, a lot of life ahead of me so I'm trying my best to stop going out doing the party life and that but when it comes to fights I'm, I'm dedicated, I'll be on that camp for six weeks and losing the weight, training hard, all that kind of stuff. Is it fair to say boxing's kind of kept you disciplined in your life so far and it's gave you a good structure in your life that's took you away from the kind of nights out, the kind of partying, the girls and things like that? It has and it hasn't because uh, obviously you need to have your own time as well. You can't you just, but like, we, I do want to go far in the box, I want to dedicate myself to boxing 100% but... How far do you want to go? I want to go far, I want to go to the top. Well My, you've got what it takes? Aye, I, I do. I've got it, aye. Definitely, 100%. Even with that fight with Arthur, like my first senior fight, I thought, head guard off. This is, this is where it all happens, man. This is when you know if you're going to like boxing or not. So, I enjoyed it. Do you feel at home you go to that, every time you go to that ring? Aye, I do. It's like my second home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't class it. It's when I come in here, it's like my second home, aye. You in love with the sport? I'm in love with it, aye. I am. love it a lot. The key is to rip up the script and be different in this game. Do you believe you can do that? Aye, I can. Uh, I'm cocky, man, so I, I feel like I can bring a lot of, a lot of attention to this sport, aye. You're, you're a very motivated individual. I'm if more you get something in your head, do you want it? You know you can get it. Aye, I do. Like I said, even like for the Scottish, that's a big thing for, for me. I'll, I'll talk about the Scottish a lot because that is a big achievement for me, being a, a senior. And winning a belt like that, like, it's a big achievement, so I always dedicate myself to things like that. I've seen some of your bouts, you've kind of got that unshakable confidence behind you, which is, behind that there's got to be a lot of substance, the way you walk to the ring, you truly believe that anybody in front of you, do you believe you can beat them? Aye, I do, aye. So obviously it's still amateur, 
So I feel like it's a winner or a lose. I take it, it's experience, but obviously when I go to turn pro, I don't want to be losing at all. That's when you want to start winning fights and getting yourself a bigger name. Where do you get that mentality for Robert, that kind of credible confidence that you do have? Who do you get it from? I think I get it from my dad, man. Aye. <laughs> I get it from my dad. <laughs> Is he kind of like that as nah, well, right? He thinks he's a shagger. He's not a shagger, <laughs> but I'm a shagger. <laughs> no, I mean, he's no. <laughs> he's like Craig, he's a ball bag. <laughs> can no him, can no Are you close to your dad? I am very close to my mum. My dad and my mum, sorry. And my sister, I Very close. Boxing is all about timing, season moments. Do you believe when those moments do come, you will seize that moment? Aye, I do. Aye. What would it mean to you to get to the next Commonwealth Games? Is that the goal? Because every fighter has goals, they have visions, but you need to have a plan. What is that plan? My plan is obviously to do the, com the next Commonwealth, but obviously uh, there's other boys up there the same way and stuff, so obviously if they're more dedicated, they'll get it, but I feel like my dedication now is quite good, so I feel like if I keep doing what I'm doing now, I'll get there. That's something you visualise and you have in your head that that is the long term goal, to get to the games and to medal at the games, and is that something you see down, down the line? I, I do, but like there's other big tournaments out there, like the Worlds and stuff, so I feel like if I do go to the Worlds or I go to other big tournament and I get a good medal in it and I get recognised off bigger and better promoters, I, I'll go to them, but uh, nah, I'm, Something gets in front of the Commonwealth Games before then, I'll, I'll go and do that and then maybe go pro. What makes you different for others? Uh, I want it more. I do. But a, a lot of people say the exact same, they want it a lot more than, than I do. But uh, like honestly, I'll go home, sleep, eat, all that, and just watch boxing and then come in here and train. So I, I, I'd imagine there's a lot of other boxers doing that as well. but. Everyone's just wanting it as well. How big is your heart? Ah, it's big. Like like I said, I'm talking about the Scottish a lot, but it showed it in that last round with me and Arthur. Obviously in the third when I was challenging to go ahead, so I really wanted it, I Just talking about the Commonwealth Games, I've seen you see guys like Sean Lazzarini, Sam Hickey, Reese Lynch, what they've achieved. It's been an incredible year for Scottish boxing. They've elevated it to another level yet again. Does that can inspire you to get to where they've got to in oh, the games? I definitely looking up to the like I've boxed with them, like some of them up at training and stuff, and I look at like the likes of Sam Hickey and stuff, cracking boxer. Uh, obviously he got bet in the world off Lewis Richardson, and then obviously come back in the Commonwealth Games and put him down with a right hand in the second round. I'm sure, and then won the fight. Things like that. It's amazing to see that. So let's just talk about that fight with Alec Arthur Jr. My eyes, mate, it was box office for Oxford in Scotland. The style confrontation, the switch hitter versus the southpaw, there was will, there was skill. As I said, he's done the country proud. How good was it to be a part of that fight? Uh, it was amazing. Uh, some buzz. But I, I, I knew Alex, it was weird, man, because I knew like when the Scottish was coming up, us two were going to be fighting, but I've trained with Alex before, obviously, up boxing Scotland, international training and stuff. And done bits of sparring with him and stuff, but uh, I it was, it was awkward, man, because obviously I saw him in the way in, obviously the sheets and that came out. I said to myself, like, fuck, I'm fighting him, man. This guy be awkward, man, because we're two good pals and all, like, it's no... The respect's there, isn't it? Aye, it is, the respect is there. Uh, I, I felt it was, it was awkward, but it had to be done, so, and I thought it felt like the better man won it. He was like a pair of gangsters in there, mate. It was the best versus the best. It was an incredible fight. But see when that bell went at the third round, did you feel you'd done enough just to get it? I did. I feel like uh, first round, I had it in the bag. And then come second round, I felt like he took it. But I remember, obviously, the coach just said to me in the corner, look, he's won that second round. You need to make sure you win this third round. And I gave everything I could. And I did. Uh, he was, he was a tough, he's tough, he can hit, he can bang, man, you know what I mean? So, I, uh, as I said, the last 30 seconds, I felt like I had to make something of it, so I, it was good. What areas in the fight did you feel you were strong in there? Where did you feel you kind of edged it, as you said there? What areas in the fight did you feel? What attributes were you were working? Coming third round, like when I was switching and stuff to like, off docks to surf pot, it was, uh, it was caputting them off, like you could see that. 
that's why I started to do it a lot more. I wish I'd done it in the first round, but I thought, stick to the basics first, see how I get on, and then come second round, I started care switching, but it was near the third round I started switching into Southpaw, and he wasn't liking it because I was making him miss, and then counting on back, so I felt like the, the third round was a big round for me. Let's just go back to that third round, obviously, well, you, you bit a games on ship, you dropped the hand, you called him in, you worked the body, he came back with a flurry, then he caught you with a crack and left, took over the top. Did you feel it? Aye, my eyes were the back of my head, man. <laughs> Aye. Because you could see me gym the ref looking at me like, oh, is he alright? Is he knocked out or whatever? Because I was leaning on him, man. So, uh, no, I, just, I felt, aye, it was, it was a good shot, but thank God it was the last 10 seconds, I reckon. Obviously, that, my, my eyes were the back of my head, so I was putting all my weight on him, so I was alright. Uh, no, nah, it was a good shot. He can bang, man. He's a talented boxer, Alex. Like, like his dad and stuff, man. You know what I mean? So, how much do you rate him as a fighter? I rate him a lot. I obviously he's, he's dedicated because uh, his dad's always got him in, in the gym training. Like, my dad, he's in good shape. Unlike me, I'm like the next Fury, man. <laughs> out of shape, man. You know what I mean? He come in this gym, big <laughs> Boris. He's got the eight pack and all that, man. I'm sitting there with fucking. <laughs> That's <laughs> man, not me. No, uh, okay. I don't care about being. Like, I do care about being in shape and that and stuff. But you look at the like a fury and stuff. Like, I don't really care about having a six pack, eight pack. See, as long as I'm winning titles, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. No. Was that the hardest fight of your career so far? Aye, definitely. Uh, one of them anyway, because I've boxed in the GBs in 2018 against a boy called John Hedges. Mm -hmm. uh, very good boxer. He's now signed with the likes of Eddie Hill and stuff. Uh, so I can like look at, look at back then and go, look, man, I fought him. Now he's signed with Eddie Hill. How could I not get to that level? Know what I mean? So just look at the two coaches you've got in your corner. They had he's had in your corner, obviously. I like Arthur. God, you cut his head on a big boxing glove was at the top. Of it, do you know what I mean? Nah. He's been there and done it. Boxing's been his whole life, do you know what I mean? Especially you with Craig Dixon, mm -hmm. another fantastic coach, a world class coach, both of them in my eyes. Um, but how good is having somebody like in your corner, like Craig? No, it's good. Uh, obviously, he's got all the experience, man. Look where he took Cash. Obviously, Cash is not going to say himself. He would never go there with Craig. So I feel like uh, all the skills Craig's got, all he can do is just show me, and then I can just fucking learn it. Take it inside the ring. You close with Craig? I am close with him. I uh, I've only just started to work with Craig through lockdown. Obviously, I couldn't come in the gym because it was pros only. Uh, so I, st I kind of just started working with him, but I was always pestering them, asking them, oh, you want to take me rounds in the pads, fucking bamming them up and that. So I was like, aye, moan in, give you a round or two. But he was always busy with Cash or Boris or yeah. whoever else he had back then. But uh, no, I'm close to him. He's a bit of a pain in the arse in that eye, but <laughs> just need to deal with it, man. He looks after you, but doesn't he? No, he does. Aye, he does. He's a good guy. He does look after us, man. Texts you through the weekend, asking you what you're up to. If you're out, don't be drinking, don't be shagging. <laughs> keep, keep yourself to yourself, <laughs> man, you know what I mean? What about the fishing? He likes the fishing, doesn't he? Aye, he's fucking obsessed with that fishing, man. Good for uh, the mind, but, isn't it? Do you know aye, what it's mean? good. That, I, I don't know a wee bit of fishing with my pals, but he took his uh, sea fishing. I can't remember where it was, man, it was down near uh, Balak Way and that. But I went down there, with me, his two boys and uh, Chucks. It was a good day out. It was all burnt, man. If you go on his Instagram, man, you'll see me slipping <laughs> in the motor, man. <laughs> Look, I feel cabbage. So just speaking about, obviously, coaching and things like that, you're obviously into a boxing Scotland programme. How's your time been in there? Ah, it's been good. Like, I was in, obviously, before lockdown, I was in with boxing Scotland, but maturity, like me speaking about maturity, my maturity wasn't there. I wasn't attending like Zoom calls and that, but it was hard for everyone through lockdown. So I ended up getting like kicked off the team. And then uh, after winning the Scottish and that, I said to myself, I want to make sure I get back on that team because that's where I'm only going to now get fights. How did you get kicked off the team? What was behind that? My maturity, just acting like a wee fanny, to be quite honest. Uh, but it was hard. It wasn't just that. I felt like obviously. Through lockdown, you couldn't go up and train, so they were wanting you to uh, go on Zoom calls and obviously do like shadow boxing drills and stuff, the kind of basic stuff they show you. But I, I didn't have time because I was working back then with my two uncles doing plumbing and stuff. Okay. So uh, 
couldn't, I didn't have time, so obviously if you have no good time, you're not allowed to train up there. So you need to make a commitment through the week to have be a part of the team. Have you learned your lesson for getting kicked out? Has he been mature and things like that? Have you, have you grown up for that? I you? have, I, I definitely have. Uh, that's what I said to myself, so when I got kicked off, I said when the Scottish come up, I want to make sure I win that and get myself back on the team because that's the only way I'm going to get further on with my career, like my amateur career, so aye. Are you getting everything you need in that box in Scotland now? Aye, they're good. Uh, enjoy the training, enjoy the sparring obviously as well because it mixes it up, so they're just sparring with the likes of Boris all the time or whoever else Craig gets me, but I enjoy just mixing up the sparring even with Alex and Big Sean and stuff. What have you learned for that lesson for getting kicked out? Uh, that's what I mean, my maturity back then was a lot different, obviously a lot of people matured different, so I thought, eh, uh, why well, are you funny, man? Like I said, just listen and make sure you're doing different. Do you feel you lacked a bit of discipline back then, Robert? Aye, I didn't, I wasn't as disciplined as I am now, man. Like, my disciplines went a lot higher than it has, because, eh, uh, I know if I want it as much as anyone else does, you need to put the work in. Go with the wrong crowd, I take it in, a few years back, or? No, I, I'm, I've always I've always been alright, man. Like I've no, I've never been in like crowds, like bad crowds or anything, bad my dick. But eh, uh, no, I've I've always been alright. That's the thing about you, Robert. You've got tons of skills, mate, and you've got tons of confidence. I always say, if you've got all the skills, you know confidence. It's like, it's like having a million pound in the bank, you can't spend it. Mm -hmm. But you've got both of them, so you need to take that with both hands, and you'll go places. You've got all the skill in the world, mate. You've got to be dedicated to this game. This game is the hardest sport in the world. You've got to give everything. Oh, definitely. I, I know. Uh, that's what I was saying, obviously. When you get to a certain age, at 18, 19, 20, that's the age you can start going out bevying and all that kind of stuff. So, obviously, that's a big impact in your boxing as well. You don't want to be going out doing all that. You can't do both. You can only do one. Because you get fun out in that, right? I know, you is. do. That's what I mean. You I don't aye. give your life to this sport. You, you always get found out. You've yeah. Other times, don't you? Do you know what I mean? I oh, know. You, you can only do one. So back to boxing Scotland. So what? But you had any good trips away or anything like that? I went to JB's there. Uh, I can't remember when. In fact, uh, it was right after the Westlands, I'm sure. I went down to Wales. I fought a boy called Isaac. Uh, it was a split decision, I'm sure. I mean, watching that. That's uh, a good job in that fight, by I, I watched it at the Renfrew show, the Renfrewshire show, at the Normandy, made it on the screen. Oh, right, aye, I And I thought you won the fight clearly, but uh, usual kind of set on amateur boxing. It's that's what I'm saying, it's amateur boxing, it's corrupt, I think. So, that's what it is. I take it as experience, win or lose, it's amateur than it. It would have been a lot different if it was the pros. I mean, I'd be like, poor upset and stuff about it, but I know, take it as experience. And, Keep you, going. Are you enjoying your time in at Boxing Scotland? I am. I just want to do the Commonwealth, like I said, get a big tournament in, get a good medal and something like that, and then talk about going pro. But aye, I do enjoy it. Like, uh, obviously, it's good getting different experience, have different coaches, like like uh, Big Stephen Simmons, Ricky Burns and stuff. Can he beat that? How do you go with Simo, Ricky, and Willie Lemond as well in there as well? Aye, Willie's mental, man. Going down to <laughs> Wales, man. He's some <laughs> guy, man. Aye, he's aye. mental. Uh, Aye, he's, he's bonkers, man. We were in the back of the bus in Wales and uh, Big Stevie the ref, man. We were me, Ronald, me, Ronald Devlin and uh, Willie were sitting up the back of the bus just talking about birds and that, man. It's funny <laughs> as fuck, man. Yeah, he's some part of man. You learned a lot for Simmel, Ricky? Aye. Uh, Willie as well? Aye, I have. I've uh, only been training with him for a couple of weeks now, so I don't really... I'm, I wasn't up there for a while, obviously, because stuff was going on. But uh, I have done pads and they've taught me a couple of things, but I'm looking forward to obviously doing a lot more with like, the likes of them. Come on, tell me uh, some of the good stories of wind-ups they've had in there. What, uh, in there? At Boxing Scotland. Boxing Scotland. Well, as you can tell me by the obviously you watch what you're saying. Oh, right, I know, I know. <laughs> I, know. You like. uh, I don't know, I can't tell you, see, because I've only been up there for a wee while. I, I don't know. Bam Alex up, because how ugly he is, man, that's still like that, you know what I mean? You can't, uh, he's ginger, you know what I mean? It's, uh, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I've not got any. But big Simmel, we must have signed him. Him? No, uh, honest, I don't know. He, he doesn't speak much. He just farts. <laughs> He's thinking man, of like it. Said, <laughs> man, <isn't it? laughs> no, I don't know. 
But you learn so much after you guys have been there and done it. See if you chucked out their belts in the ring, aye. you wouldn't get in, you didn't phone them. Do you know what I mean? No, no definitely, I like, like you said with the one with Tony Bellew and Stephen Simmons, I've yeah, started that, watching that. Aye, that was back in uh, 2004 at the Four Nations. If you get a chance to watch that fight, see Big Simmons, what a heart he had. Oh, oh honestly, what a fighter. Fantastic fighter. Just, I thought he underachieved, I thought he'd done a lot more, but what he picked up along the way was incredible. As I said, the uh-huh. WBC at S- Silver International, the IBF European, the Celtic Cruiser, he lost in the British to Matty Haskins, but I tell you, Big Simmons was one hell of a fighter. Aye. He had a lot of heart. You know I, mean? I told me he didn't get his first international fight till he was 20, man. So, saying that, like, I didn't get mine till I was 18. So, does he ever wind you up saying he could take you or that? Nah, nah. <laughs> well, he probably, he probably <laughs> thinks he can, but I don't know. Uh, he's a good boxer. I've watched obviously a couple of his fights, but I didn't know he fought Tony Bell, you obviously. Aye, 2004, it was, mate. I've started watching that. I'll give that a watch. Getting good sparring at Boxing Scotland? Aye, I was sparring with the likes of Alex and obviously Big Sean. Uh, just day two just now man they're the only kind of people up there at my weight so they bring the pros some pros in now and again to Sparrys no? Uh, has GB been doing that? I've seen, I see, that. I seen they had a couple of pros but I think it was for me the boys who are lighter mm-hmm. like the 60s and stuff I didn't see anyone in I've my seen weight Harry, Can- Harry Kinsella was in there I'm sure he was in there Right. Uh, the Scouser guy he trains up here with Dominic Vaughan I've seen him in there a couple of times he's a good fighter but anyway Let's, let's run it back, mate. So you brought up Luck Winnock. Aye, Luck Winnock, aye. How was your upbringing? Aye, it was good. It's quiet. It's a nice wee village. Everyone says it's posh. It's a village, but uh, I'm no posh, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm, I'm no stuck <laughs> up or anything, man. So, uh, aye, it's all right. It's quiet. It's just brutal, obviously, when you get to... When you're young, you need to get trains everywhere and buses because it's out the way. For where I hang about, man, I hang about like Paisley and Johnston and stuff. So, you have much? You're young, still young, but do you have much? I had a lot. My mum and dad always gave me anything like I wanted, so I they were always good to me, asking for uh, pounds and two pounds for the <laughs> shop to go get packets of sweets and that. that <laughs> mean. As long as it's no fags, that's the main <laughs> thing. No, no, no. Um, you close to your mum and dad? I am very close. Same with my sister, I'm close with all three of them. Uh, don't do a lot in the house, but man, that mean. <laughs> I'm lazy in the house, man. No wonder <laughs> if you're coming in, you're training all the time and then gone home, you're shattered, man. You know what I mean? So, and then training through the week, well, obviously, the international team. So, I, they did a lot for me, especially my sister, man. Like coming home and my mum and dad working, maybe she's in the house, she'll go, I'll cook your dinner. I batter in, then. You know what I mean? <laughs> More in a cheeky way, but just batter in, man. Like, when you go, man. Do you feel your mum and dad have made a lot, made a lot of sacrifices to get? To, to you where you want to be in your life at this moment in time? I definitely, like, yeah, obviously, with money and stuff, like, with amateur boxing, you're not getting paid or anything, so, obviously, you get sponsors and that. It's hard to get sponsors, man. No, no much people want a sponsor, yeah. unless you're the top level, like, the likes of Josh Taylor, and you've got a good amateur career and pro career uh, at back here. But, uh, they've always went, they've always gave me money, man, when I need it. Obviously for like travelling expenses and stuff because I don't work, so it's hard. You obviously need that sort of money to get places and buy new gear, boxing boots, gloves, gum shields, head guard, all that kind of stuff. And they've always kind of done that for me, so I appreciate it a lot. That's what I was going to say, do you appreciate it, aye? I do, I do appreciate it because if it wasn't for them I wouldn't be doing boxing. Because how would I get to boxing? How would I pay for boxing? I always say it myself, aye. What did your mum say to you? Want to be a boxer? Your dad always approves it, but mum's the no one's hundred percent. He's like, just get in, man. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. Man. I hope he gets a bash nose in that man. <laughs> know what I mean? But my mum's always my mum was kind of like, my first two fights. She was like, oh god, man, like I don't want to see this at all. But a couple of fights in, man, she was enjoying it. In fact, so I it was football or boxing when I was younger. Like I was doing both, and obviously it came to one of them. What one day, what day? Because kind of do both, and I said to myself, boxing. Football's too hard to get in there, man. Too many young people there. You just touched on you're very close to your dad. He gave you good guidance in your life so far? I was like, he didn't have the best when he was younger, he said to me. So, obviously, he wants the best for me. Uh, that's why he got me into sport and stuff. Like, Walk on it's quiet. Like, that's what he says. Like, he stayed in Beave. Beave was rough, man, like, when where he lived. So, he didn't want that car upbringing for me, he wanted me to have a nice one, obviously get into my sport and keep, 
keep it safe. What's your best mate? Eh, uh, then my mum's my best mate. Hi, <laughs> my mum. She's my best mate. Hi. She keep you right. I'm my mummy's boy, so I mean, hi. <laughs> I'm my mummy's boy. I get along with my dad. Like, don't get me wrong, but eh, uh, very a mummy's boy. Aye. Who's the most vocal at your fights? Uh, Who can you hear? Probably my dad. He gets he gets built <laughs> winded up, man. <laughs> no, I mean, aye, probably my dad or my sister. One of the two, man. What does that mean to you, seeing you when you come out and about and you see your mum and dad, like a home show or something like that, and you see your mum, your dad and your sister? What does that mean to you when you see them all happy and chuffy? Aye, amazing. Like, even if I lose, it's it's good to see, because they've always there, they're always like, oh, well done, you've still done good, like, stuff like that. Uh, they're always still trying to boost my confidence, even if I do get bit. So, aye, I appreciate all three of them a lot, aye. You back your 100%, don't you? Oh, aye, they do, 100%. Uh, you need that in boxing, you need people, good people behind you, obviously a good team is pivotal for good success in boxing, you need those people because when the highs there's highs and the lows there's lows, how important is it to have the people in the boot, you like your mum and dad and your sister and things like that? You need to surround yourself with good people, in this game especially man, because obviously there's a, you get a lot of stories, people obviously no want you to do good or you end up getting robbed out of money or whatever, all that kind of crap, but uh, no, I, I, I try to surround myself with good people like my mum and my dad, my sister, some of my pals and obviously my coach and that, but I'll not tell many people things about if I'm struggling, I only tell certain people I trust, like my, obviously my family and uh, my coach and stuff, that's the only kind of people I'll tell. They always say it's the quiet ones you need to watch. Aye, aye, they do, they do say that, aye. I don't, I don't, I don't tell people much things, man. I always keep a front of myself. They don't pay attention, see the nonsense in social media and things like that, the Twitter, the Instagram, yeah. that's all bullshit and lies. These are all bullies that are on these things, it's all yeah, nonsense, yeah, yeah. it's all crap. If you look at good boxers like Usyk and things like that, they're hardly on their social media. Yeah. Look how successful they are. Aye, don't get me wrong, it's great for, as a promotional tool, but all it is is a popularity contest. Aye, it is. No, definitely. Like, sh social media can fuck with your head, man, big time. That's why I try to stay off it as much as possible, but I'm a poser, man. I like uh, Good look, man. Ah, good look, man. What can I do? Not I mean. George Best of the boxing world. <laughs> That's <laughs> it, no, I like uh, I, I like going on Facebook and Instagram now and again, man. But see when you're flicking through, man, you see some of the things, man. No, it's no. That's that's what I think, man. I, I wish I I was back in like the eighties, man, when you didn't have phones and all that kind of stuff because you know, fuck with you. Just look man. at that MMA fighter Khabib. What that guy done was play and fight. Look how successful he was. Aye. Do you know what I mean? He's amazing, man. So, how did you go into school? School? I'm no smart, man. I'll be honest. I'm... I'm no good when it comes to pen and paper, man. No matter care stuff. That's why I got myself into sport. That was something I was good at. But when it comes to math, English, all that care stuff, I'm... Crap. I ended up getting booted out of school, man, for fear. Expelled? Aye. Just for bad behaviour and stuff. What was that for? Just bad behaviour or fighting or anything? Just bad behaviour. Just acting... But I told, man, know what I mean? But I think that was just my excuse to get out of school work and that because I wasn't smart. So I, I always dedicated myself to boxing or football, but like I say, it came to a choice, boxing. So I've always just dedicated and drilled that into myself, just boxing, boxing, boxing. I never cared about school as well because through school I was boxing. So I would I was really at school as well because obviously I had fights coming up, I had weight to cut. A training to make, all that kind of stuff, so aye. Boxing being your education then? Aye, it has, and it will be for the rest of my life, aye. Unless something happens, obviously I need to fall back into a job. But at least I can say I've, I've tried. You eat 100% don't you? Aye, 100%, you need to give a spot 100%, because if you don't, there's no point of doing it at all. So what brought you to boxing? I think it was my dad, man. I, I don't know. I think I was just quite aggressive in the house, man. So, uh, I think my dad just says, right, we'll try to find a boxing gym, we'll take you down. So I started off with uh, the gym in Linwood, John McIntyre. Good coach. Good coach. Uh, good to all these boys as well. So, I respect John, obviously, helping me out when I was a wee guy, but I felt like I need to get the experience, move club. Got the experience, moved to Renfrewshire. Uh, I can't mind when I moved, I think it was maybe 2016. Moved to Renfrewshire. I was good, I enjoyed it. Got the likes of Colin Belshaw and stuff. So, 
Aye. Did it come natural to you, Robert, or do you have to work at it? Do you feel you're born to do this? I feel like, I don't know, man. I feel like you need to, uh, don't need to be, I'm talented, man. I know I'm talented. I, I feel like I'm, I'm being big ego here, but I know I'm talented, so, so I feel like I need to use that kind of talent to uh, achieve things in boxing. So, aye. What makes a good fighter? Heart, man, aye. Need heart for this game, definitely. If you don't, fuck, man. Love fighting? I love fighting, aye. Oh, I love fighting, aye. Aye. You know, saying gun out and stuff, man, and it won't buy you, like, oh, because you know, you day boxing, they want to fight you, they want to take out the bigger man. I try to walk away from things. I did walk away, but they were not shit, oh, you're shit back, you know that. You find that difficult to walk away? Ah, you do, because you do, yeah, in their eyes, but in my eyes, I don't look like a shape bag, but in their eyes, they'll be like, a shape bag, he's walking away, he's might be a boxer on that, but I care about things like that. Just get on with my life, I want to achieve things, make good money in the sport. How far do you want to go, Robert? Do you, how do you visualise your future? Do you see yourselves as a unified world champion? Or, wh wh how, how do you plan this route? Tell me how you go about this. I feel like, if, obviously, if I get a medal in the... Commonwealth, silver, gold, obviously gold, because that's what I'm going to go for. I feel like uh, from there, I'll make my, my amateur career as best as possible. Same with the pro, I want to try to get to the top. I want to be in the likes of sharing the ring with Yusek and Joshua and Fury and stuff. I want to be, I want to be there, definitely. You see yourself hitting Vegas and MSG in years to come, headlining bills, is that the, the dreams that you have? I hopefully, if I keep myself dedicated and stay on the right path, I, I feel like I can uh, just stay out of trouble and do a nightclubs and birds, stay away from them and all, because they fuck with your head and all. It's the same old, same old, mate. Aye. See nightclubs. Give me 25 years to realise that. So it's the same old bullshit, the same people, the same nonsense. But it's funny, maybe I said, party when you get old. Aye, that's what my dad says. Sacrifice 14 years of your life at least. And then you can go out there and enjoy it after you've done your boxing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. Try my best to do it. You've got the skills, you've got the will, you've got it all. Just keep believing in yourself, and you'll get to the top. Mm -hmm. Dedicate your whole life to the sport. Right. It's the best advice I can give you. Do you know yeah. what I mean? When did you realise that you were no bad at boxing? When was the first kind of time you were like, do you know what? I can make a career out of this. I think it was after my first championships in 2014, uh, in the novices. Uh, I got through to the, the final and I said, I'm actually decent at this. I was, back then I thought it was just merely a hobby. Like football, I thought it was just a hobby I wouldn't go for. After that, I thought, I think I'm going to stick to this, man. Try my best, because I was not good at school. So, aye, I thought the sport is, boxing is my, my good thing, aye. See the best advice I can give you, right? Don't look back in 10 years and go, ah. I fucking wish I'd done that. Mm -hmm. The worst thing in life is regret. Aye. Seriously, if get it in your head well, what you want to do. Get the plan, get it in place. You and Craig sit down together and do what, do what you want to do, mate, honestly. Give it everything. No, that's it, aye. Definitely, that's what I want to do, man. Like Craig says, surround yourself with the good people, man. You'll go far. Positive energy. Aye, that's it, aye. Mm -hmm. But... What takes your mind off of things, obviously, because it's a very grueling, very difficult sport. You need to give your whole life, as we keep saying. But what takes your mind off of boxing, Rob? Where do you do in your spare time? Obviously, apart from the clearing up and tinder and things like that. But <laughs> where, where do you do um, apart from boxing? Uh, I go out with my pals and that, go play pool and stuff, do wee things like that. But uh, they're all into the party life, man. They've got good jobs, man. Plumbers, joiners, and all that. I don't. So. Means I just dedicate myself to this. You can't do both, like you said, man. Can't go party and then come into training on Sunday morning, hungover, sweating like blowing at your ass. I blowing at your ass because likes are craving that they'll know straight away, and they don't want that. They want people that want to dedicate themselves and train the best. I stuff like that, man. I, I try to stay away from it. I do, and if I do go, I won't be drinking. I won't be doing all that kind of stuff because I can't be bored with it. So you just feel like a bag of shine on the Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. So you touched on Craig Dixon there. Describe the journey to me so far. Is it a good laugh? Things like that. But when he's got to work, he's got to work. Aye, aye. Like, we have a carry on, man. Like, don't get us wrong. Like, we Josh, just came in, man, training ways and 
we're off like, carrying on and stuff. And <laughs> Josh's like, what the fuck's going on here, man? Because he's like, the part of you have like me, Boris, Chucks and Craig, it's, it's funny, man, that I mean. <laughs> Some of the stories he tells you, I know, obviously, when he used to turn beside uh, Craig Doherty and stuff, man, it's things like that for the Scottish in the changing room. Some of the stories he's telling me, fucking, you've got Graham Hamilton sitting next to me, school teacher guy, man, he's like, this cunt's not writing up, man. <laughs> this is before a Scottish, you know, man, this is me Aye. going into the ring, win the Scottish title, and this cunt's telling me fucking <laughs> bad stories back then when he was in Liverpool and all that, with Craig. Just but, try uh, to take the edge off it, innit? But, Aye, and that's experience, see, see in life you can buy it, you can buy it hundreds of things, but you can't buy time and experience. Uh, and see the experience these guys will give you, second to none. No, it is. I know, I know. Like Craig said himself, like, yeah, he, wasn't a, he wasn't the best boxer. Like, even with the interview of you, you heard him, he wasn't the best boxer, but he was definitely the best coach. Mm -hmm. But he's gave his life to the sport. Oh, he has. And he is a world class I, coach, isn't he? Look at his journey with cash. Do you know uh, what I mean? Definitely. It's, uh, uh, big Boris is coming along and all. Mm -hmm. He's a big unit, eh? Oh, man, uh, he can bang. Mm -hmm. He's good. Be good to see him go far. Like he's good. He's good enough to go far. You know what I mean? Like to go for British titles and stuff. He is. But no one's wanting to challenge him, man, because they're scared. He can bang, man. Mm -hmm. I understand that. He just needs that one big fight, and then that's it. Do you know what I mean? It just goes for the springboards, doesn't it? Aye, it does. Aye, aye. Would it be fair to say Craig Dixon goes above and beyond for you? Aye. Like, hundred percent. If I do go to the top, I'd take Craig with me. Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair naughty, man. You know what I mean? He'd probably say, no, go, go do your thing, but I wouldn't. I would, I would want to take him with me, go to the top. Do you say sometimes he reinforces you, like he reinforces your dream, he reins you back in when you've been up to any good and things like that? you feel he does that for you? Ah, he does, man. He'll text you, man. He'll say to you, like, would you get up at the weekend on Sunday morning? Or if you're in the gym on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. he'll know when you're lying straight away. Like, yeah, I wasn't drinking, Craig. It's experience again, isn't it? When we'll go in and do six rounds in and see how you feel with <laughs> him, you know what I mean? It's things like that, you, you, you spot it straight away. Comes with experience, you know, straight away with things like that. What's the best piece of advice he's gave you so far? Don't act that funny, man. Don't, don't go out clubbing and stuff. Sacrifice 14 years, 15 years of your life and dedicate yourself to this sport. It's how much I want it. No Craig, anyone around me, it's me. Who's once in it, so aye. So speaking of world champions and great fighters, we've got an incredible rematch coming up. Josh Taylor and Jack Carroll. This is going to be a cracker. How does this fight play out, Robert? I felt like Josh was struggling to obviously make weight for the first fight they had, but uh, I feel like if they step up, is it 147? Uh, one, one, 140. 140, aye. aye. But if they step up to that, I feel like uh, Josh... Josh will whack it, aye, definitely. I wouldn't say he got robbed. I, I wouldn't say Jack got robbed in the first fight. I felt like Josh actually gave him a, a, a good fight. Mm -hmm. So aye, uh, it's boxing, like you says, man. Like, his misses and Josh are getting all sorts of abuse, man. That's, that's no fair, man. It's not, it's not like he, he judged it, man. No, I mean, it's the people around, around the ring that's judging it. What does Josh need to do different in this fight? It's the boxing, man. He was... Too busy getting himself caught up, man. Do you feel he was shot at the weight? Aye, that's what I felt. He felt he looked weak, man. Mm -hmm. like, he looked very, very skinny. He wasn't as sharp as he always was, wasn't Nah, he wasn't, man. Uh, no, I feel like if he goes up weight and he fights him at a good weight, he'll be strong. I feel like he'll win, mm -hmm. definitely. Do you feel him under Joe McNally now is a new leash of life for Josh? And he'll maybe the Joe, Joe will get him in a good position that he'll be the best... Josh Taylor on the night, and I feel the best Josh Taylor eats the best Jack Carroll, but if he crashes the weight, he could be in serious trouble. I do, because I feel like Ben Davis, I'm going to take that with him, brilliant coach, but he's got too many boys, mm -hmm. he's training too many, mm -hmm. so I feel like uh, Josh has done the right thing, got himself away for that, and wants to try something different, maybe it wasn't working out with him and Ben for the first time. Do you feel Josh has to be ruthless in this fight? and be the old Josh Taylor to see the unified champion, undisputed junior welterweight champion, went to Vegas, done it all, they has to roll back at a, a fight or two and be that Josh Taylor to get this victory. Ah, he needs to get it all, 100%. He needs to make sure he wins it, man. Every single round, no one or two or three, he needs to make sure he wins all 11 rounds. What impresses you about Josh Taylor as a fighter? 
for Scottish boxing. He's done a lot, man. Like, obviously, you've got your old timers. Like, is it Jim Watt? Jim Watt, yeah. Aye, like, you look at the guys, man. Like, Ken jo Buchanan. Aye, like, mm -hmm. jo like, Josh Taylor, man. He's done a lot for Scottish boxing, man. Mm -hmm. That's why I can look up to him as well. Seeing that, like, you don't get big time Scottish boxers. I mean, Josh has made it big time. Mm -hmm. Just obviously needs to prove himself in this fight, make sure he does does the business, man. But I feel like he will. What type of game plan do you think Josh might need to come up with in this fight? Like I said, obviously we're stepping up with the weight and stuff. He would just need to keep everything long and sharp. Keep him control the fight. Mm -hmm. Make sure he controls every single round. Do you think he can stop Jack? Uh, Jack's tough, man. He took a good couple of good shots in the first fight. I thought, man, how's he no went down, man? But he's, he's got a good chin, Jack, so I feel like it, I'll go the full distance, man, definitely. Do you think the pressure got to Josh slightly a wee bit in, that, in the first fight? It was his homecoming. He was, he was tight at the weight. Do you think there's a wee bit of pressure behind Josh in that fight? That's why he didn't. He wasn't the best Josh Taylor in there. I think it was the day maybe with the weight, man. I don't know. Like I'm not like speaking to him and stuff mm. or anything, so I wouldn't know. But I feel like it was to do with the weight, definitely, because you could see, man, when he was going on the scales, man, getting weighed in. He looked weak, thin, didn't he? Man, aye. Didn't he look right? And obviously, when you type in uh, Josh Taylor on YouTube and stuff, you can see him trying to make weight, and he's sitting in this. Mattress hanging with blankets and radiators and that around him, man. That's that's no healthy, man. Whatever, well, I say it myself, whatever way I sit it, man, I'll fight it. So maybe it was always like, wasn't it? Ah, it's, it's comfortable at it. So I, I just say, man, just make sure whatever way he sits it, fights it, man. So give me a prediction for that fight. I think, honestly, I think it's got a split decision, man. You think so, aye? Aye. I do. I think Josh Taylor will just nip it again. Aye. Split decision. Definitely. It'll be in, it, the place will be in fire that, mate. Imagine that national anthem walking to that ring. That would be incredible. Do you know Rose what I mean? Rose getting held again. I'm, I'm hearing it's the hydro, but I'm, it's not been confirmed yet. Right. Um, uh, but well, it'll be an absolute cracker of a fight. I think it would be better if it Do you think it'll go to the cards then? It'll be a very tight on the cards again then? Aye, it will be t I, I feel like it'll be tight again. So, uh, I, that's what I'm saying. Split decision, definitely. I feel like you'll just get it though. Because mm -hmm. Jack's a very good boxer, man. You can see that. He's well skilled, isn't he, Jack Carroll? Ah, that Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis, isn't ah, it? it's nice. I like his style. But, uh, like I say, split decision, definitely. I'm going with Taylor. Mm -hmm. Not just because I'm fucking Scottish, man. Mm -hmm. what I mean? well, you're, uh, the best, best po policy is honesty. Do you aye. know what I mean, boxing? That's good. You've given it a count in that opinion. Yep. Aye. But one thing I'd like to talk to you about is uh, Javonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia. I just feel boxing needs this super fight, wouldn't you agree? Oh, I definitely. I feel like uh, that fight needs to happen. I feel like everyone's saying, oh, Ryan can see us too tall, big, and that thing. But you watch Javonti, man. He's, he's amazing. She's punches, technique, different, timing. <laughs> Minted, man. You think this fight could go 12 rounds? I'll, I'll eat my heart if it does. I don't think it will. I, I honestly think Javonti Davis will take him out in the sixth round. Mm -hmm. actually, I actually fancy Ryan Garcia to beat him, mate. Do you want Aye, to I, I, I just think, see under him, under Joe Goosen, right. don't get me wrong, Javonta Davis doesn't throw a lot of punches, mm -hmm. whereas Ryan Garcia is very, he's a, a, a incredible counter puncher. He throws these shots that quick, you can't see them on TV, but it's whether, can Javonta deal with the speed? Can Garcia take that that haymaker? If you tank Davis, it's a great fight, but how how do you see that kind of, do you, you say it's going early? Do you see Tank starting faster? But when you watch Tank's fights, man, he starts very slow. I feel like it offers his pace in the later rounds. So I don't know, I can tell you. Uh, but Ryan, Ryan Kersier, man, he's, he's sharp, like he says, man, fast, man. So if he keeps after long and fast and makes sure he keeps his chin down, man, he'll be fine. So I feel like he would maybe get it. Do you think Tank can stay disciplined for the full 12? Because he, if, if Garcia isn't it? An early lead, Tank might be chasing the fight. Do you think it might go like that, or do you think it's just right for the get go? Garcia puts it on him? Nah, I think Tank will chase him. Mm -hmm. Like, he's a shorter boxer, man. He'll try to get under shots and stuff, so I feel like he'll, uh, he'll make it a hard fight for Ryan Kersier, definitely. Well, I need to push you for a prediction in that fight. How do you see that going then? Javonte Davis. Vicious knockout? Aye, knockout. Late rounds, so. though. Mm -hmm. It needs to be like 
like I said, the six, seventh round mm -hmm. for a, a, a knockout, definitely. Because mm -hmm. obviously, he's not got a chin, man. Ryan Casier, man. See when Luke Campbell knocked him, well, didn't he knock him out? Put him put down, him man. Down, didn't he? I was like, are you right, man? Mm -hmm. I don't know if he can punch Luke Campbell, man, but I was like, to myself, it, was, it wasn't that big a shot, was it? No. I, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. He's not been tested yet. Like, that's it. That's his, probably his first big test with Javante Davis. So. It's a cold war with the promoters, but in it, see, like, you see these fights now, they're hardly getting made due to nonsense with money and all this kind of bullshit. And see, years ago with the Four Kings and things like that, it was the best fight and the best. That's thing, one thing about Don King and Bob Arum. They knew how to get a fight on the line. Whereas, see, nowadays, it's all this back and forth and nonsense and YouTubers money. YouTubers and, and mm -hmm. coming into boxing. I, I don't agree with that, man. I'll be straight with you, mate. It kills me. It absolutely kills me. It, see, see, seen it, and it, it, it takes uh, the limelight away from pro boxers as well. Mm. And I, I, I'll, I'll be straight with you, I blame like, the likes of Eddie Hearn and Carla Sterling because they, they promoted it for the start, also the networks as well. Um, and I, I hope Touchwood this never happens, but I, I think somebody could get hurt. Nah. And that's the last thing we want. It's not that these guys are not doing camps correctly, they're not doing weight correctly. I've seen a guy in there, fucking some TikTok dude, no. nearly in his 50s against a fucking bear at 25. Uh -huh. All that takes is one clean hit and it's over. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I saw they were going to do Canelo and Jake Paul. Mm -hmm. I will look what Canelo done to Billy Joe Saunders, man, right. with his face. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, doing that to Jake Paul, man, he'll kill. Oh. Nah, it's, well, that's the, stupid, man. There is a saying, the circus always leaves town, so mm. hopefully it's fucking soon, do you know what I mean? Uh, no, they need to get in my way because obviously. People like myself need to work hard to get to that level and these YouTubers are just getting chucked in mm -hmm. and getting stupid money for it, man. You touched on Canelo Alvarez. Is, is that a fighter you study, Robert? Uh, no, really, man. Like, big fury. Like, him all the time, but see, when I've been working like, with Craig and stuff, James Tony. That's all he sends me. James Tony. Big fan of James Tony. So if you go on our Instagram <laughs> top match, it's James Tony. That's mm -hmm. all he likes, man. Uh, like you said, like the interview with you and Craig, man, you're talking about cash, like James Tony, like inside fighter, but a smaller version, man. Uh, as I said, to you, cash for it's one of the best inside fighters Scotland's ever had, and I'm serious about that. By the way, you look at cash, look at his style, right? If you cut J half of Jake Lamotta and half of James Tony and moulded that together, that's the cash for it style. I saw, I saw it saying like you wouldn't, you wouldn't think this, man, but I actually they study cash, you know. Mm -hmm. See his head movement, unreal, man. Can he get any better than that? See, because Craig teaches that stuff in the pads. That's obviously the things I want to learn to move my head. Don't get hit. Does Cash come into the gym a lot and give pointers and things like that? Aye, he will. He will. Uh, I feel like he, did, he doesn't do it as much because obviously Craig's yeah. gave him a friend. I've got Craig as a coach, so he doesn't really need to say much to me. But if I ask him, he'll, he'll give me a couple. But I've got Craig there, so I don't really need to pester him and say like cash what show me this and that he's got all the wee the young team now he's training so yeah i believe he'll be a world-class trainer i've always said that his life is boxing he's dedicated his whole life to it he's, he's an incredible chap i've got a lot of respect for him is he somebody you look up to aye cash is definitely i look up to him a lot uh, obviously what he's done for scottish boxing not just josh taylor but him he's amazing man even with that fight with lee mcgregor mm -hmm. that was amazing man. Man. Ah, it was a good fight to watch that was proper going to the well shirt, by the way. Let uh, me tell you, what a fight that was. Man. Uh, I, was blown. I was sitting my jaw like that <laughs> full time. Honestly, unbelievable. Uh, it would all look better in person, man. I wish I went to it. I was mm. watching it on telly when it was going on. So, uh, it was a cracking fight. I enjoyed that. I'd like to see it again, but... How do you think Lee McGregor goes? How do you think he progresses? Do you think he's going to kick on? Aye, he's doing good. He's doing good, don't know. Aye, but I feel like he needs to get more fights, man. He's got to get busy, hasn't he? Aye, uh, he needs to get busy. I like his style as well, but... Oh, he's a good boxer. Mm -hmm. Nice guy to speak to as well. Mm -hmm. Very well spoken, isn't he? Ah, he's very really nice, aye. So anyway, um, I really appreciate your time with you. Is there anything you'd like to add, mate, before we close up? No, just cheers for having us on. Mm -hmm. Aye. Okay, top man. Get a big pat on. <laughs> <laughs> right, cheers, Robert. Thanks aye, cheers. Cheers, mate.